What is he doing? What a strange potato man. I got carried away again. I mean, to be frankly honest, I think I'd already been carried away. Like, I'm already away, but now I'm getting carried away further. You see, in the previous Hermitcraft episode, I showed off the fresh paint job and also turbo noises that I've installed on my horse. And this all stems from some fairly stupid jokes that I made in Hermitcraft Season 8, Episode 12. And inspired by these puns, I sent a few messages. You know about the messages that I sent to Danny asking for the sweet new paint job, which he has absolutely delivered on. At the same time, I also sent a message to my friend Jono who is an incredibly talented individual in the music department and I, I sent him a message just with the Tokyo Drift song and just I, I just I mentioned that it would be really nice if I had something that sounded similar to it I just I just mentioned it in passing you know I just I thought it'd be nice and well he delivered the only thing that I will say is I currently don't know what the lyrics are so if it says something horrendously offensive, then I do apologize. I am in the process of getting it translated, but the person who's translating it is taking a very long time to get the translation to me. So I'm just gonna YOLO it and upload it and see what happens. It could literally be saying anything. So please go down to the comment section and write down your own translations down in the comment section, incorrect answers only. And the funniest bad translation will win a ride on my Fast and Fury horse. Anyway, what's the plan? For the people who've been keeping up with my Minecraft Redstone videos, you will know that recently, I have created this incredibly satisfying redstone contraption. I kind of hinted towards this in the previous Hermitcraft episode. I've always said I wanted to do something interesting with the waterfall. And yes, this this is a way that I plan on getting into my base. And it looks absolutely fantastic if I do say so myself. And one thing that I did see suggested down in the comments section is moss blocks are actually immovable. Or at least they're not immovable, but they don't stick to slime blocks and honey blocks. So that makes them the perfect block to use in the wall there. And it's a lot better than things like blast furnaces or grey shulker boxes or furnaces turned the wrong way around. But there is one slight issue with this piston door is that it is quite expensive on the resources front, especially the slime blocks and the honey blocks. I think slime should be okay. Honey could be a problem. So let's hop onto the server and see what we can do. This... This might be weirder than what I just started my episode with. But on the topic of Scar, we might be onto a winner with his honey wagon. Bee eggs. That's <laughs> this is fantastic news. Is it really 32 honey blocks for a diamond? That is that is that is a steal. That is an absolute steal. And it looks like Scar's got a fast and fury horse of his own. <laughs> for goodness sake, man. It's honestly remarkable how prone to dying Scar is. A decent amount of resource gathering has been done, but we still have a lot more to do. An absolutely enormous thank you to Impulse for providing me with those slime blocks, otherwise we'd have been really stuck. Or I guess really not stuck, because you know, slime blocks are st sticky and... Uh, gathering quartz, getting observers, and now I would say I'm finally ready. This looks like a pretty good stash. The only slight concern that I have about this project is, well, this situation right here. This, <laughs> this situation right here. I mean, oh, somebody's lit up this side. What legend lit up this side? Whoever it was, I need to channel their energy into the other side of the base because right now, it is incredibly lethal, but I'm also incredibly scared and I can't kill anything. And just for all you downers out there, still not killed anything. Oh gosh, this seems deadly. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. How am I escaping death for this long? Honestly remarkable at this point. Honestly remarkable. I mean, I guess if you just keep your head down, 
and don't look, and don't look, then nothing can hurt you. Look at this. <laughs> that is so many mobs. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh, oh, whoa. I think I got really lucky then. I feel like a lot happened and I, I managed to get out of it not dead. Which is honestly quite remarkable. Right, let's keep it going. This this technique seems to actually work. I'm like a I'm 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 like a a, a mob repellent. These mobs want nothing to do with me. Right, let's get this creeper to blow these guys up. Be <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> After a decent number of close shaves, I managed to get torches in pretty much all the locations through this technique right here. Which is called just flying into a wall and then falling down it while holding down the right click button. That seems to have done a pretty good job at completely covering the place with lights. So now that I shouldn't have any mob problems, I think it's time that we actually construct this piston door. And because you've already watched me build it once in the redstone video, I think we're going to do it in the form of a time lapse. And the urge to use the Tokyo Drift song again is incredibly high. And after three hours of hard concentration, the door is all constructed. All of the redstone is in place and everything should be ready to go. I am so scared that I am genuinely really scared and also really tired. You know, I've, I've been concentrating so much getting this thing built that it, it's got me very concerned that maybe I could have done it wrong. But regardless of my trepidation, I think it's time that we activate this thing for the first time. I'm so nervous, I can't stop doing checks on the redstone. I can't stop doing them. All right, let, let, let's just do this, okay? What we should see is a push out, and then a retraction, and then the block sliding out the way. Are we ready? Did, th did that work? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that all happened so fast. That happened so fast, but that is correct. And also the splitter has popped out as well. This is good. This is very, very, very good. Now let's see if the closing is functioning. Okay. Yes. This is all working. It is all working. It is all doing what it's supposed to do, which is so good. I can sleep soundly knowing that my redstone has functioned. I've just woken up to some rather interesting and incredibly surprising news. I've been receiving an awful lot of messages. This. This is precarious. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, what? <laughs> I don't even know what to make of this face here. Well, apparently I am the CEO of Botum Incorporated. I am, this is me. I, I'm the CEO. They had a meeting and I wasn't there and thus I was made CEO. I'm, I am mildly baffled about how that's come about. Like how does one not turn up to a meeting and end up with the highest role in the company? How does, how, how, what? I mean, what happens if I don't turn up to the next meeting? Hey, eh? like do I get another promotion? Do I, do I get promoted to World Emperor? You know, Commander of the Universe? What happens? Where does it go from here? Regardless, I am incredibly excited at the fact that I've been appointed at CEO of Botum Incorporated, despite the fact that I have never once had a successful business on the Hermitcraft server. I do definitely feel mildly underqualified here, but I am going to accept this role with open arms, and I, I am, yeah, I'm going to start thinking of some company policies and some things that we can do to really bring the group together and, and build build a solid team framework, team framework, and then good 
get good returns and 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 oh gosh, I might be out of my depth here. I mean, really, uh, they they choose to appoint a potato who has put a resource pack on his horse that gives it turbo noises and flames down the side of it and, and, and sunglasses. That's I was the best fit. Me, me? <laughs> I, the person who thought oh dear was a good idea. Me, that guy, the person who sold passes to his industrial district that then meant that he had to buy other people's stock because people kept taking things from his industrial district. That guy, the person whose only previous success at making diamonds on Hermitcraft is selling his mustache off his face. Me, I guess. I guess I'm incredibly experienced in what not to do with a store on the Hermitcraft server, and that experience could be valuable. You know, so maybe I am the right fit after all. Let's get to work on the back cave, shall we? The fear is setting in once again. Water and redstone, always a terrifying combination. This is actually being a little bit more annoying than I was expecting, just because of the way the water is flowing. This is always incredibly satisfying. Even if I had to ride my horse all the way over to Iskal and Ethos base to actually get the XP, because all the ones near me have sold out, probably because of me. Anyway, back over at the waterfall now. This is the first test with water. And that is looking split to me. That is looking split. We have split the waterfall. And we've got ourselves a really big entrance. Okay, that is looking good. That is looking seriously, seriously good. And then when it comes to the closing, that's kind of the easy bit. And the easy bit has been successful. This, this is working. It is actually working. We have got ourselves an entrance to the base. Hallelujah! Wow, how, 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 how do you how, how do you say that word? I mean, oh, I just looked at the spell. The, weirdly enough, the spelling is on. Wow, that's strange. I'm listening to a podcast right now, and one of the titles of the podcast is Hallelujah, and it's on my screen. So I was able to look to my left, and I could see how. You spell it, but then it's spelled even weirder than how you say it. Hallelujah. Life is a struggle, isn't it? Anyway, our waterfall splitter door is now all working properly, and it is looking absolutely fantastic, if I do say so myself. But this input right here, this isn't particularly good. Now, I have had an idea of how I could do this, and it would be amazing if it worked, but we need to take some measurements. You see, I would absolutely love to run tripwire across, say, this segment of the cave, so you almost have to dive in, activate the trip wires, and then that will cause the base to open, so then you can fly straight through. I mean, can you imagine how cool that would feel? I just need a little bit of string, which conveniently I have in my storage system. So all of the trip wire hooks are in place, and they actually don't look as bad as I was expecting them to. The only concern that I have here is speed. Is the door going to be able to open fast enough? And I guess there's really only one way to find out on that one. These are going to be difficult to place. I can't even see them. I know that's kind of the point, but still, this is challenging. We are around about halfway done. Or at least I think we're around about halfway done. Honestly, I don't know. You're going to have to believe me when I say that all of this area has been fully stringed. It's the worst progress update ever. And now it is all finished. And well, it looks exactly the same as it did before. So of course, the next task is to connect up this invisible area here into a redstone line that is then going to run into our piston door. So I've run redstone behind all of the blocks that have the tripwire hooks, which was much, much more confusing than I was expecting it to be. And now I guess I'm going to keep digging in this general direction until I run into an opening, which I assume is going to have my door in it. Now that I'm here, it's worth mentioning that this is not just as simple as connecting up our tripwires into this redstone mechanism, because these double piston extenders they require a tentic pulse to function, aka that of a stone button. And also, we need to make sure that this thing doesn't open and close too quickly. So we're going to need pulse extenders, we're going to need pulse generators, and then we also need to make sure that there's a system in place that means that when it closes, it can't be opened again immediately, because then I imagine the water will do something weird. And to be frankly honest, I'm not 100% certain how I'm going to do that just yet. I am using some old school redstone techniques right here. I mean, this is, we are really harking back to the olden days. And this is also quite a hilariously bootleg way of doing things. I'm a little bit embarrassed to put my name to this, but it should all work. I mean, this redstone line runs from the tripwire hooks and it goes into this pulse extender, which is going to extend out the pulse. That's nice and simple. That then outputs into a dual edge monostable circuit, which means we'll get a pulse at the start of the pulse extension. And then we'll also get a pulse outputted at the end 
of the pulse extension because this piston door here works on pulses so that means the pulse at the start will open the door and the pulse at the end will close the door but this door requires a specific length of pulse which is what this 2010 pulse extender is for and that extends the pulse out to around about 10 ticks and to deal with the piston door being opened too fast after it has been closed we have got this redstone line right here which will essentially block off the system to new inputs for the length of the pulse extender and then also the length of these repeaters so this this is almost like the cooldown time between the inputs coming in. I can't believe I just spent a minute explaining that monstrosity. Let's see if it actually does the job. Now, I know that Elytra and Tripwires are a little bit fiddly, so you kind of have to circle through. Whoa! <laughs> that is incredible, though. That is incredible. That is so... I, I want to do that again. So here I come. I'm flying into my base. And then I just need to do a bit of a 360. Activate my trip wires. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that is so cool! And then it will close up behind me. Uh, I'm literally... Ah, uh, I'm living out of fantasy. I am literally living out of fantasy. By the way, I've changed my outfit. You might be able to notice. I'm now Batatman. It can be abbreviated to Tap Man. And you know, me and Bruce Wayne, we don't have, we're not too dissimilar. You know, we're both CEOs of companies that we don't really fully understand. We don't really understand why we're CEO either. That's, that is a strong connection that we have there. We both have highly advanced weaponry and incredibly fast reflexes. Neither of us kill people despite it making logical sense to do so at some points. We both have sweet rides. And we both have really manly and low pitched husky voices. Manly. Husky. Yeah. <laughs> That's so stupid. The only issue is my parents are still alive, but that can be changed. Other than that small and slightly inconvenient difference, me and Bruce Wayne, we're basically the same guy. And I expect to be treated as such by my fellow hermits. And no, I don't know what that entails either. I've removed these three blocks for the benefit of everyone. And now that that incredibly important detail has been covered, it's time to start planning out the next stage of the base, which of course is going to be my massive storage system. As much as I love Teresa, you know, and Teresa is filled with items and she's doing a wonderful job of storing them. I am quickly running out of space. So I'm thinking, I mean, we, we have a lot of space to play with here. Like, we have so much space. This is probably the most space to play with I've ever had. And what's funny is, to create the storage system, I'm actually going to have to create more space because I'm going to be digging out this entire area. So all of this space here, probably... Right the way back to the theoretical back of the base. Don't worry, I will be constructing that soon. That could be our hallway. So if we cleared out, say, out to here, and then it went right the way back. I mean, that would look amazing. And we could have a storage system big enough to store every single item in Minecraft. And in terms of the design that I'm going to be using, it's going to be the standard one, all right? Because whenever I try and do anything fancy with storage systems, they just become unreliable. You know, so I'm just, I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm going to stick with the one that works every single time reliably. I don't want to have to think about loading and unloading it and all that. I just want something that works. But obviously the storage system, that's going down in the floor. And it's really quite low down. You can see the top of the door there. We're not even scratching the surface of the space that's available. So one thing that did come to mind is the idea of creating a planetarium. So we've got the storage system down at the bottom here, and then we've got a glass roof on top of it. It all looks rather magnificent. It's all very grand and fancy. And then up at the top here, we have a night sky. So all of the torches get removed from the walls. Everything is pitch black. And then we just have little stars that we can see and potentially planets and maybe, maybe bigger stars here and there, you know, add some variety in. I mean, that would look insane. That would look completely nuts. I mean, for me personally, there's nothing better than a clear night sky and being able to see all of the stars. I absolutely love it. And when I'm out on dog walks, I often spend most of my time looking directly upwards, which can be dangerous. So if I was to be able to recreate that feeling in Minecraft, that would be something. That would be something. I would heavily enjoy that experience. And I think it would make for a really unique and interesting build and also a really interesting and unique use of this huge amount of space that we have here. It would be a colossal project though. There's no doubt about that. So please let me know down in the comment section if you like the sound of that plan or if you think of a better use for this space 
I would absolutely love to hear it. Maybe we could think of something that leans more into the peace, love, and plants thing. I don't know. I mean, a night sky, that's that's pretty peace, love, and plants. Yeah, that's about as peace, love, and plants as it gets, to be fair. As you can hear, I'm still very much in the early stages here, but I have this image in my head, and I think it looks great. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope that you've enjoyed this slightly chaotic and wild episode on the Hermitcraft server. It's been a ton of fun, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya! And just as a final word for today's Hermitcraft episode, I want to say a huge thank you once again to Jono for absolutely smashing it out of the park with that song. He... I mean, what? What a champion! I don't know how he does it. It is insane, but his... Details and things will be down in the description. Please do check out his bits and bobs because he is... What, what a guy.